In this video, I want to give you a update on the Tukoni Tukoni Creek stormwater trash pollution situation. I want to document some of the litter and stormwater trash pollution problems, begin to synthesize trash photo survey data that I've been collecting since uh, August of 2012, and assess potential trash discharge from the Philadelphia Water Department's trapped stormwater inlets. So let's begin with a review of a series of trash photo surveys. We'll, we'll try to synthesize some of the findings uh, from these individual surveys to provide an overview situ of the situation with trash pollution in the watershed. Uh, the first location we'll look at is Rock Creek now, Rock Creek is an area, a, a part of a tributary that drains parts of northwest Philadelphia and Cheltenham. And the Cheltenham part of it includes three large shopping centers, the Cedarbrook Plaza, the Cheltenham Plaza, and the Cheltenham Mall. Now, I, I show you in the lower left the large box culvert. What that is, is that's a culvert that crosses under Limekill Pike and Ogons Avenue. Now, I want to just highlight one of the shopping centers to give you a sense for the litter situation. This happens to be the Cheltenham Mall. And I show you on the left there, you can see the Cheltenham Mall uh, 1, which there was the three locations along Ogons Avenue where I will show you the litter situation. And then I'm going to show you some photos of the Rock Creek, that's RC2, to give you a sense for the extensive trash in the creek. So let's take a look along Ogons Avenue, and you can see the litter buildup is uh, quite uh, severe. Both the upper photo on the on the right shows you just to the north of the mall and the lower photo shows you a drainage ditch right next to the mall. Very serious levels of litter. Now these photos are taken from uh, Ogons Avenue looking down into Rock Creek and this is a very steep area and it frankly is a very difficult area to get access um, so these photos were as close as I could get on this particular day and what you'll see is an extensive buildup of litter along the bank. This is litter that is probably blowing across from the from the shopping areas, possibly some even coming from Philadelphia, and uh, getting hung up on the bank. Now this will eventually wind its way into the creek because of uh, the impact of overland flow. Now, at a, about two months later, in order to get a better understanding of Rock Creek, I conducted a walking survey up the creek to really get a better close-up look. And I went from uh, Curtis Dog Park up to Ogons Avenue, and you can see I, the red arrow indicating I went upstream. And now this is a photo of the creek just upstream of the Curtis Dog Park. We can see clear evidence of stream trash the white-looking uh, material are plastic bag remains uh, that have been hung up on branches. Now, as we get closer up, this is about midway up to Ogons Avenue, you can see quite an extensive buildup of trash uh, caught up in uh, woody uh, debris jams. Now, this is even closer. This is by the uh, mall, and you can see that just a, a, a wide extension uh, extent of plastic uh, trash bags uh, and other debris that have been hung up on the uh, branches. So clearly we have a very serious uh, trash pollution problem on the upper Rock Creek which is contributed from a combination of the litter from the streets and the malls as well as uh, the city's uh, T1 combined sewer overflow. Now the second location I want to go to next is the Mill Run Creek in Cheltenham Avenue. And in this one what I want to do is I want to take a look at the role of outfalls and channel roughness 
on the stream trash conditions so that we can see the factors involved in, con in evaluating and analyzing a particular trash uh, problem. So here we are. Um, this is the beginning of Mill Run Creek. It actually emerges from that box culvert at Cheltenham Avenue. So Cheltenham Avenue is just above that box culvert. And that happens to be outfall T080801 uh, from the Water Department. And it, just to let you know, the Water Department's naming convention is something like T01, which stand for Taconi, and O1 by itself would indicate it's the first combined sewer overflow. In this case, we have T08801. That's an indication that it is, in fact, a separate storm sewer discharge. Now, we also see the 15-inch Cheltenham outfall. Now, this photo shows us just a little downstream, and you can see an extensive trash, both in the branches of in the vegetation as well as caught up in the rocks of the uh, channel. Now the question becomes how much of this is from the water department's uh, outfall versus Cheltenham's outfall. In this particular case there's essentially no overland flow. This is outfall related simply because of the drainage patterns in the area. So this next map shows you uh, something I think is important which is a method for coding and classifying the extent of stream trash. It, I'm using in this case the Rapid Trash Assessment, the RTA scoring system developed by the California Water Boards. I think it becomes a useful way and you can see the categories optimum, suboptimal, marginal, and poor and those are what an observer will see on a first glance, an assessment of the trash conditions. So what I've done is I've used that technique to the sections of Mill Run, and I've subdivided the sections, you can see A, B, C, D, and E, and I've classified them according to the criteria from the RTA. Next what I've done is I've shown you the locations of the outfalls. This happens to be on a ArcGIS Explorer uh, map, and uh, this uh, particular tool is uh, a free avail freely available tool so it can be used by citizen scientists as well as uh, the public agencies. And what I'm located on here is the survey limits as well as the outfalls. Now this particular photo, series of photos, um, what I'm trying to highlight is the differences in trash conditions. So if we look at section A, you can see that's just downstream of the Water Department and Cheltenham outfalls. It's not too bad from a trash standpoint. Now we go to B and you can see a much higher level of trash. And if we go over to E, it's also very bad. Now if you, re you recall, what I showed you was the middle section, section C, was classified as green, not the suboptimal. And the question you have to ask yourself is, well, why would it go from marginal to poor to suboptimal and then back to poor. And what I want to stress here is that when you're looking at stream trash, you have to consider both the sources, in this case the outfalls, but also the channel conditions. It turns out that Section B has a very rough channel conditions. We have both um, a lot of vegetation on the bank that, that'll trap the trash. And whereas in Section C, we have a very smooth wall and channel bed so that the trash that may be in the stream simply flows through. So what happens here is that we get a, a load of trash from the Philadelphia and Cheltenham outfall in section A. It builds up quite extensively in section B. You don't see much of it in section C. However, there are additional outfalls in section C which make it worse in sections D and E. So it's important to recognize the interplay of both the sources and the channel conditions when we're assessing uh, stream trash. Now the third one I'd like to talk about are the uh, two Philadelphia Water Department uh, separate storm sewer outfalls to get a sense for what may be happening at uh, separate storm sewer outfalls. 
here I'm showing you a section of the Tuckanee Creek just upstream of Philadelphia and what we have uh, there's actually there are four Philadelphia Water Department uh, outfalls along the Tuckanee Creek in this area. I've highlighted two where I was able to, to conduct a survey T0803 and T8002 and I'm going to show you downstream photos this is T8002, and what this clearly indicates is two uh, very serious problems. We have both a sewage uh, discharge, that's clearly evident in the discolored uh, water, and we also have pretty strong evidence of uh, trash, in this case uh, plastic bags particularly, uh, caught up in the uh, woody debris. Now at T03 we have a very similar situation. We don't have the evidence of sewage, but we have clear evidence of plastic bag buildup in the woody debris. So we have to be concerned about the separate storm sewer overflows as well as the combined sewer overflows. Next I'd like to go to Adams Avenue and discuss the importance of overland flows contribution of litter to the creek. Here we are at Adams Avenue and Crescentville Road, and you can see this major deposition of land litter. When I say land litter, what I mean here is that it, this is litter that is not going to flow directly into a storm drain, but rather will, in fact, have to flow overland to the creek. Eventually, this litter will make its way to the creek. We get strong enough uh, rainstorms, several inches, that will be carried across. Uh, it might take a couple of storms, but it will in fact make its way to the creek eventually. Now here's an example of some trash that has made its way, or is in the process of making its way from Adams Avenue down the slope and is in fact about halfway to the creek at this point. Since we're at Adams Avenue, I want to stress the need in field investigations for carefully looking at the full situation. This is a storm sewer uh, overflow, uh, outfall, and it doesn't frankly look too bad. We don't see much indication of uh, any trash or litter around this particular outfall. However, you've got to be careful when you're looking at these outfalls because if we follow the channel, you can see now that there's an extensive buildup of litter downstream of that storm sewer outfall that's been caught in the woody debris. Again, the conditions of the channel were such that it not much got caught up outs right outside of the outfall, but further down we saw significant evidence, we see significant evidence of uh, trash coming out of that outfall. Okay, the next one I'd like to do is I'd like to go to uh, uh, the Water Department's uh, CSO outfall T3 and let's see what we can learn there about the, how to inspect uh, trash discharges at an outfall. In this photo, what I want to show you is the importance of a thorough investigation of a uh, outfall situation. What we have is the uh, main stem of the, the uh, Tacone Creek coming from the mid-right part of the photo going on a diagonal to the lower left. And we also have this the other channel, which is coming from the T3 outfall, which is coming basically from the left to the middle of the uh, screen. I've gone by here a number of times in the past, didn't notice any particular trash issues, and so did not go up the unnamed tributary. Fortunately, in early uh, April, I did go up that channel, and when I did, I quickly realized what I had been missing before, which is a significant trash contribution from the Water Department's T3 outfall. You can see clearly the buildup on the rocks of uh, litter, plastic bags, and so forth that have been built up uh, in the channel as it comes out of the outfall. But it's actually more complicated than that. Let's go and take a closer look. We can see now in this particular photo, you see the remains of plastic that has come out of the outfall, been hung up on those rocks, and clearly has uh, 
the indications of having been contaminated with sewage. So uh, we know that this particular plastic has come out of the outfall. But when I say it's more complicated, we have to look at the broader part of it, and we can see there's a significant overland flow litter component to this uh, story as well. So when we look close uh, by the outfall, we see a extensive litter field. This will mix with the CSO trash, so it becomes kind of a challenge to determine the relative contribution from the outfall versus the overland flow around T3. One of the clues is when we look closely at the litter in the channel, there's a clear difference in appearance between the CSO outfall litter, which will be stained with sewage versus the litter that has flown overland and is, has not been exposed to significant uh, sewage. Now I'm showing you the main channel again because I want to stress, and this is just downstream of where T3 discharges to the to the uh, to Coney, you can't necessarily tell in the main channel that there is in fact a significant source of uh, combined sewer or even separate sewer overflow. You have to go up these channels to, to assess them. Now the final uh, lesson learned uh, study uh, example I want to go through is the uh, uh, Water Department's uh, CSO uh, T5. And here what I want to talk about is the role of the city's trapped inlets in the discharge of neutrally buoyant materials. Neutrally buoyant materials are things like plastic bags and food wrappers, which are essentially the same weight as water. And the question is whether or not the water department's stormwater inlets are able to prevent this plastic material from passing into the creek. The inlets are trapped, which clearly helps to prevent floatable material, plastic bottles being a perfect example. They get trapped in the inlet and do not generally come out the out the, the water department's outfalls because they've been trapped trapped in the inlet. Plastic bags are a different situation. The evidence so far makes me believe that a fairly high portion of the plastic bags in the city's stormwater inlets may be passing through the trapped inlet and making its way to the outfalls. This is a pretty clear example here. This is a wider view. Clearly shows us that we've got a plastic bag problem downstream of our uh, water department uh, CSO outfall. So this is where I am at this point uh, in my trying to understand the stream trash situation in the Tukani Tukoni Creek watershed. Litter is a major cause of trash, uh, creek trash pollution. Outfalls and channel roughness have to be considered together when looking at a particular section of stream. Separate storm sewer outfalls can clearly cause trash discharges. Overland flow is a serious part of the problem that has to be addressed. We need close inspection of outfalls to assess their discharge. And at this point, uh, it clearly appears that the water department's trapped inlets can let neutrally buoyant materials escape to the outfalls. So what does this all uh, lead to? And my working conclusions at this point are that we simply have too much litter finding its way to the Tukani Tukoni Creek. We have to tackle the problem as a litter being a water pollution problem. Plastic bags are a major problem in our creek trash pollution in the Tukani Tukoni. And the current levels of litter and tr creek trash control for the Tukani and Tukoni creek are, creek are simply not adequate and need to be improved. Thank you. I hope that uh, this has been informative and you look forward to future reports. Thank you.